Hello everyone, I'm back. It's been a long time, and by that I mean about a week since I did a one versus one replay cast, but it's time to get back on into another one. We're going to be having ourselves what should be a fantastic match here. A Protoss versus Zerg, Neeb versus Raynor on the map, Port Alexander. Let me get those uh, names lined up there, but spawning down the bottom right hand side of the map, I already said both their names. It's Ting's Neeb. And his opponent in the top left is a Gamer's Origin Rainer. So uh, just two incredible players that we've got here. This is some more of the IEM replays for those of you wondering. Just uh, figured, you know, these games are still completely relevant. Very high level play. Probably like uh, the biggest collection of high... Well, WCS has been going on, but you don't get much better than IEM, honestly. So I figure it's coming up to the main event. I'll just continue casting these until we get to there. Maybe then I'll cast a few of the main few of the uh, main tournament games that aren't covered on the main streams and whatnot. That being said, these qualifiers have delivered some great games. This is actually the second Rainer versus Neeb I cast. I cast the other one a while back on my channel. However, I heard that this was also a great game. So We've got ourselves a hatchery on the way for Rainer. Neeb getting up his gateway. Gonna be going for a gateway expand from the seam of things. Everything normal while I was rambling there. Rainer and Neeb, though, two incredibly great players. Both, like, very, very high up in their own region. Neeb, just uh, pretty much like the best North American player. Neeb special. Toss that crown back and forth a bit, I suppose. Then, uh, Rainer. I like how I was looking. <laughs> I was looking at Rainer while I was talking about while I was talking about Neeb, and now I'm gonna look at Neeb while I'm talking about Rainer. Rainer, on the other hand, is a very, very good, sort of still up and coming. Whereas Neeb's really had his time in the sun and is trying to sort of recapture that former glory. Rainer, he made it to the finals of a WCS event. However, he's still still improving, still looking for some big results and whatnot. And uh, also looking to get that probe out of here. Neeb's been being a pain harassing with his probe. Knowing the timings, though, that the four Zerglings are on the way, that means that the probe's going to start making his way out of there. And then just a couple of queens on the way. Nexus on the way. We'll have to find out what build that Neeb's going to go for here. It really is the Protoss that decides in a sense. Usually, anyway. Sometimes the Zergs will bring out a lot of aggression, make a ton of lings or something like that. Ooh, Neeb's probe. Ooh. Goes for a pylon block and then goes down. Okay, so Neeb trying to be as big of a pain as possible. Delaying this base a little bit. Not really, though. I mean, Raynor didn't quite have the money. When there is the lings out, you can't really just throw up a pylon in the face of them, but I guess Neeb figured it may as well give it a go. Nothing too major going on. That probe dying, it's like, yeah, well, it's not the end of the world. It's not great, but it's not the end of the world. Adept going to shade on in here for Neeb, actually. Getting that first bit of scouting off. We'll see if uh, she manages to shade on out. Maybe pick off a drone, that would be nice. So far, Neeb bruising some of the drones. And Adept shades on out, so not able to get him. Look at all those bruised Zerg units. One shot away. They've all taken a frisbee to the face, and that's exactly what an Adept throws out. Adept going to be shading back on in here. However, cancels that. Just going to be heading on home. Meanwhile, Neeb getting that Stargate on the way. Phoenix already working away on that Overlord. We'll see if it's going to be something like that double Stargate play. Neeb has got that Oracle on the way. Although, until the first Overlord's dead, you don't usually throw up the extra Stargate. So we'll see what heck is Neeb going to go for behind this. Will we see that extra Stargate? He's got his extra gases taken. Throwing up another pylon. No twilight or anything. There we go. Double Stargate on the way. This build has become so common in Protoss versus Zerg. Even, uh, I know these IEM replays are a little bit dated at this point. That's just because of how fast StarCraft 2 evolves. However, some builds stick around. Some of them become more popular. And I actually recently cast uh, the Afrika World number 32. The VODs for that are on this channel as well. And we saw stats bring that out a Bring it out a lot. So, a uh, very common build, becoming more and more popular even, it seems. Oracle's gonna dive on in here for Neeb. Pick off a couple of drones, we'll see. Gotta get on out of there. Sporecrawler works away on the Queen, works away on the Oracle. However, managing to pick off three... Managing to pick off three drones is a nice find for the Protoss player. As this is going on, Neeb on two bases. You stay on two bases for a little bit before you get up uh, your third, but Neeb will be wanting to take that as soon as he can. Probably make just a couple of units to get that on the way. And the main thing about this Stargate build is that this Stargate build completely 
is pretty much unscoutable for Zerg. It's very tough for Zerg to scout this unless the Terran make or unless the Protoss, pardon me, makes a mistake and say and say uh, has a hole in the wall and some lings slip in. Rainer is very good with his lings, but I mean it's just one one spot that Neeb has to worry about covering, always having an adept in position there. Overlords can't really get on in because of course, the Phoenix are flying around, cleaning them all up. Look at this, Rainer. He's got lings in pretty much every position, wanting to see any units that are going to fly on out. And he may just find... May just find... Nope, not going to see those Phoenix. And Neeb still keeping this a bit of a secret. These Phoenix are moving out on the map now. And Rainer's not sure what's coming his way. He's going to have plus one melee. However, these Phoenix are going to roll on up, and this could hurt Rainer. That being said, Neeb, he's stopped making phoenix as i say that he fires up one more but he's not completely committing to the to an extreme amount because we see he's already got the double robo facility on the way so he's already planning his transitioning we're seeing no plus one no plus one uh, shift weapons on the way so not going to be really committing to those phoenix that's another sign of that they will come in though they can still pick up a lot of drones Upgrades or no, Phoenix will definitely kill drones. Neeb, look at this, the Phoenix Micro is so, so good. Picking up some more drones, picks off an overboard. Micro's back to the injured Phoenix, although, ah, as I say that, I totally jinxed him. Poor Neeb. Still got five drones, though, keeping his third base alive. Rainer was harassing with his plus one lings. However, when there's a Depths tucked into a corner, when there's an Oracle in the sky, you're not going to find too much. So this opening going pretty well for Neeb so far. Killed off eight drones. That's really sort of an acceptable amount for an opening like this. These Phoenix, they also get a lot more value later on. For example, Neeb shutting down this potential fourth base from Rainer. This is preventing it from even getting started there with the Phoenix, lifting up the drone. And Neeb started an early transition here, so he's already got the Robos working away. Observer on the way, Immortals on the way. Protoss just starts building up that Immortal count. It gets higher and higher as the game goes on, generally. Meanwhile, Neeb getting up the Twilight, getting up the Forge behind this. So this is looking pretty standard for Neeb. However, looking pretty good. As a, he's just such a strong player at stages like this in the game. Phoenix coming on in, gonna lift up some more drones here. Rainer, he's got a ton of queens. Gonna be picking off, or trying to pick off the Phoenix over, not having success so far. And look at these Phoenix, they are just massacring drones. So far, nine going down just from this wave. In total, 18 have gone down. And these Phoenix, they can still maybe find some more here. Lifting up more and more drones. They're almost out of energy, it looks like. Losing a bit of shield, so over 10 drones going down. And oh, look at this, Neve even finding the poor queen. She might get transfused. She does. Rainer keeping her alive just to be killed off a second later. As this game's going on, Rainer, he's getting his plus one. He's now just starting his hydrogen, so really delaying any form of harder anti air. Oh, Phoenix got to get on out of there. Neve just being a pain finding more and more drones here, whereas Rainer is really, really committing on. That's interesting. Wait a sec. Okay, that Zergling was missing one HP. I was wondering why it's one health bar was showing. No, just as this game's going on, Rainer, he's committing to his plus two melee. So he's going to have that going for him. He's getting up his fourth base on the way now. Just the way Neep has transitioned, though, it's a little bit concerning for Rainer. He's going to be coming into Hydraling Bane Link, but that's not really what you even need as Rainer anymore. you got to be thinking about the next step past that. As Neep, look at this, building so, so many cannons. He knows who he's playing against, building a beautiful wall which helps shut down which will help shut down Baneling run by shut down Ling run by. And Neeb, he's getting even up a fleet beacon, he's getting up Psy Storm plus one charge. A potential Hydraling Bane attack can always be scary versus a Protoss. Over Neeb, he is gonna have that charge. He's got up all these immortals chilling back in his base. They're gonna come out and join the front lines with that hype train of immortals here. Look at that. They're just that's that's a beautiful line of immortals, guys. Just just look at that. And then the only thing better than a nice line of Immortals <laughs> is, uh, is a nice line of High Templar. So, fourth base, gonna be getting attempted to get up for me. He's gonna pick off these Zerglings, or pick off a decent amount of them. Doing a good job keeping that probe alive so he can start that fourth base. Of course, Raynor knows the intent. However, the way this game has gone, Raynor's powered up. He's on four bases. Yes, he's got that economy. However, the timing of his fourth base and fifth base, usually Zerg, I wouldn't have... Sometimes it's better to see the Zerg, say, try and take a bit of a greedy fourth and fifth, whereas Rainer's, the timing isn't super spectacular. He's going to have up these Hydras. He's going to have decent upgrades for them, so they'll have their plus one attack, whereas Neeb's on his plus one for now. So that considered isn't bad. However, 
it's still just gonna be Hydraling Bane versus Immortals and High Templar. And that generally doesn't go good for the Zerg player unless they're teching into something like Infestors. Raynor may be getting up to that eventually with his uh, Infestation Pit or Lurkers as well. Now we're seeing a mothership on the way for Neeb, still making Immortals, just really reaching this scary Protoss late game. This has been a very passive game, all things considered. Raynor's taken a beating from the Phoenix. He lost a fair few drones, lost a couple of lings, but everything else considered, not too much has gone down. Ooh, that's a bit of a nice pickoff, though, for Raynor finding the Oracle. Neeb was going to rely on that to keep tabs on this army. Now, all of a sudden, he's not aware of where Raynor can hit, and that's one of the things. Neeb's army is pretty darn good. However, with the element of surprise, as Raynor can possibly push him over. Raynor is maxed out. Just been producing these Hydralings and Banes pretty much non-stop. Gonna be looking to hit multiple locations, it seems, whereas Neve not quite maxed out. Hydra's rolling on up towards the fourth base of the Protoss. There is Immortals and High Templar here. Psystorm should be getting planned to be used. Meanwhile, Zealots or Zealots trying to repel the Lings and Hydras here, and they do Neve doing a good job splitting his army can be tough for Zerg to try and hit in those multiple locations. Meanwhile, Zealot's coming on in. Neeb always going to find a way in with this run by Zero. Looks like he just ran some Zealots across the map. Killed off 11 drones, actually, here. 12 drones. More and more drones going to be dying. Lings will be cleaning this up, but that hurts Raynor when he didn't get anything else done on the other side of the map. So that's painful for the for the Zerg player. Neeb's done a fantastic job splitting his army, preventing an attack. The main thing is the High Templar or the AoE. Immortals split up, they're not that good because you generally want to have that bulk, but as long as you have a bit of a ground army supported by some sure size storm, it's generally going to go pretty good defending on multiple fronts. If you're someone with the control like Neeb, Rainer stepping forward, size storm quickly makes him step on back. Looks like some Banelings could be just actually... Okay, that works. Crashing on in, kills off the Nexus. Neeb was trying to get up a fifth base. However, Raynor just rolls in like one or two Banelings. That's actually a very good trade for Raynor. That's not something you see every day. Raw Banelings just killing a building Nexus. Raynor, though, always active with his Lings and Banelings. Lots of defense here. However, Neeb's pushing on in towards the front. Almost missed that. So much size storms going down towards the... Just everywhere, blanketing this army. Neeb's still stepping forward. He burned a lot of Psy Storm. A lot of the High Templar have gone down. There's only two High Templar in Neeb's army here. I don't even know if they're all here. I think it might just be the one. No, there's two. There's a decent amount of Psy Storm on both of them, though. So, Raynor, this hurts. He loses the base. Neeb pushes him back, and he can't really punish this. I don't think Neeb can really go further without getting some more units over here. However, it looks like he's going to try. He's got Immortals, Archons, a mothership guarding this. Raynor's looking to find a good angle here. Baiting out some of those side storms. Neeb does only have a limited amount. Looks like those High Templar are going to be going down. So there's now no more side storm for Neeb. And this is where it becomes a little bit concerning for the Protoss player. Immortals good, Archons good, and a mothership helping out. However, the Hydra's pretty good when they don't have to worry about that AoE. So Raynor able to push forward, even bringing the Queens on in with this. Trying to focus down that mothership, but she does escape. Neeb, he has warped in more High Templar, however, they don't have energy for Size Storm just yet from this even thing. So Raynor actually going to be going for it now, taking this chance. Queen's coming forward, even transfusing individual Hydra. It's not an easy task, but Raynor's doing well with it. The Queen's going to try and pick off the Mothership. That does fall. Raynor's still going forward, just making units nonstop. The Hydra's trying to back up. Can Neeb hold on? He's starting to bleed out these expensive units, but a big round of Size Storm finishing up does allow him to push Raynor back a little bit. Carrier's rolling forward. It looks like Neeb has held on. He's got up a fifth base. Raynor, his own economy was hurt a little bit. It's not terrible since he had another base. However, things aren't too great for the Zerg player right now. He's getting up a greater spire, yes. However, Neeb always prepared, building up carriers already, which is going to allow him to contest the, say, Broodlords, and they're sort of just the the I was gonna say the obtuseness of the broodlords because if you're a Protoss player and you don't have anything to like carriers or something, broodlords are pretty obtuse to deal with. However, Neeb he doesn't have to worry about it. He's building up carriers. He's getting plus one, got High Templar, and that really benefits the Protoss player. Up until uh, oh look at this Rainer actually just going for it again. Hold that thought. Rainer stepping forward with all of his Hydras. Trading out right now. There's more Psy Storm though, so the Zerg player's gotta step back. He's trading out, picking off some of these units. Over this Psy Storm getting a lot of work done. Carriers don't have many interceptors left, so Raynor has to back off. 
Just the way this game has gone, though, is not looking too good for the Zerg player. Rainer, though, is taking a pretty nice fight. Ling's getting a wraparound on the Immortals. Those are plus two Ling's, so they deal a fair bit of damage to the Immortals. They all go down. Neeb, his army isn't huge. However, Rainer's isn't fantastic either. Rainer building Corruptors on his side of the map. The Carriers, though, going to become pretty scary for Neeb. I was saying the sort of Broodlords... It, it sort of works in tiers. StarCraft 2, it's like, oh, your opponent, your opponent say, makes Marines. I'm going to make Banelings, so they're going to make Widowmines, so you'll make Hydras. Things like that over and over and over. And at this point in the game, basically, the Zerg wants to get Broodlords to shut down the High Templar, so the Protoss needs Carriers or Tempest, something like that. And it's generally in the favor of the Protoss up until the Zerg, say, hits something like mass, say, infester, mass vipers, lots of score crawlers, static defense, and a roaring economy. However, Raynor doesn't have that roaring economy to make the infestors, to make the broodlords. It's doable for Zerg to beat this late game Protoss army, even when controlled by Neeb. However, Raynor's just not set up for it. That's not the kind of game he's been playing. And it's a little bit concerning for the Zerg player as Neeb moves out. Once again, he's got plus three on his ground units. He's got a ton of Psy Storm and just a nice amount of carriers. Only five, however, it makes a world of difference, forcing the Zerg player to try and deal with it. Neeb stepping forward. Raynor was trying to build a good concave. Not quite prepared, though. Baneling's rolling forward into lots of Psy Storm, though. They pretty much get nullified fight on the spot. That being said, a lot of Corruptors here working away on top of these carriers. If he can pick up the carriers, maybe the ground army can be dispatched. And it looks like that Rainer will be able to deal with that. The Corruptors take one heck of a beating from the Psy Storm there. They do fall most of the carriers though. Although there's one carrier, can he do it? I know there's other things going on right now, like 30 drones falling, tons of zealots getting damage done. Rainer killed off a good number of probes, 22. However, just the damage has been done by Neve. He's stepping forward. Immortals Archons and the one carrier who butchered so many corruptors. Oh, that carrier is a legend. And it's just Rainer's dead, guys. There's no there's no way around it. He tried to play this sort of mid-game style. He didn't play the late game, and Neeb managing to take it in typical Neeb fashion, just just being daunting the way he builds his army, the way he controls it, killing off 44 drones at the end there. And hold on, we, we have to go take a look. Let's go have a look here. Like this, look, look at this carrier. The Psy Storm did a lot of the heavy lifting, but how often do you see, like, how often do you see one carrier? All his carrier friends died. The Psy Storm helped him out. And look at this, there's like, what, six, six carriers or six corruptors in now? Look at that, easy peasy. This one carrier, what a god. Killing off all those corruptors. Yeah, Archons don't even help out. What a god. Anyway, if you guys enjoyed this, it was good to cast a 1v1 uh, game again. Thanks so much for tuning on in. If you're new to the channel, of course, make sure to hit that subscribe button. I put out content pretty regularly. And you guys can also check out my Twitter and whatnot as uh, as uh, I tweet out a lot, about, a lot about, say, upcoming tournaments and stuff that I'm running. So that's a good place to check out, get a heads on up. And also... If you did enjoy this video, make sure to hit that like button. That's what we are looking for. Anyway, I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.